Hi, welcome to the bridge. I'm Pastor Randy Jones, and this is my wife, Nancy, and we're coming to you in the name of Jesus. And we're starting a new series today. It's called Revelation Revealed. We're living in a time in which we need to know what the word says and be ready to walk it out. There was a letter, a message from Jesus himself through John to the seven churches. You need to hear what uh, uh, Jesus had to say. And uh, welcome our guest, Nancy. And uh, thanks for being with us today. And we want God to bless you richly. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It is good to be with you in the beautiful sunshine and nice spring day. And we are rejoicing. And this is the day the Lord has made. And <laughs> right. we are happy and we are rejoicing Hallelujah. in that. And uh, so we just want to welcome you to, to the Bridge Ministry with us today. And, and hope that you will be encouraged and blessed yep. and challenged as well in the Word. And um, we've got good things. There's going to be a good testimony at the end that we're going to share with you. And so we'd like to have you stick with us to the end. Just wait for it, okay? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to read to you from Revelation chapter 1. And um, I am going to read verses 1 through 3. And it says, The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servant what must soon take place. Amen. I think that's getting really close. The soon is sooner, huh? He made it known by sending his angels to his servant John, who testifies of everything he saw. That is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Christ, blessed is the one who reads aloud <laughs> the words of, the, of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take it to heart, right. what is written in it, because the time is near. The time is near. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Well, babe, give us a word from the Lord, and um, this is exciting times to be living in. Amen. Amen. Let me pray for you, though, before we get too far down the path here on this few minutes that we have together each week. Heavenly Father, I do pray for my friends that are watching right now. I ask that you would minister to them. Those that are discouraged, encourage them right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, for those that are sick in their bodies, that you would heal right now. You can do it, and we're asking that you would. And we pray right now, Lord, that you would undertake for those that are having pain, I speak to pain. I come in the name of Jesus Christ who took pain and suffering for us on Calvary. And I ask that you would come, Jesus, now reach down and heal and minister. As we feel the breeze blowing, as we see the sunshine, bring us out of our darkness. Bring us out of our stillness and let us flow in the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for marriages right now, when both partners are willing to fully repent, that total reconciliation can occur. I pray, Lord, for those that are seeking direction. Friend, if that's you today, you're seeking direction. Don't light your own fire. Don't promote yourself. Be led by the Holy Spirit and be willing to do as Jesus did. Remember, Jesus came walking in to the city and shared who he was and then eventually he rode a donkey in and making the declaration that he was the messiah which led him immediately to the cross and now he's rose again the resurrection changed everything lord i pray that for those that are watching right now that their situations would be changed right now give us courage to walk out your plan and to implement your will for our personal lives. We want that, Lord. Help us not to listen to the voices of the world, but to get our leading and guiding from the Holy Spirit. Strengthen us now. Bless these few minutes we have in the Word and to minister now. And for that, we give you praise, honor, and glory in the resurrected name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said a hearty amen. Hey, if this is the first time you're watching us on the broadcast of The Bridge, uh, we welcome you to our ministry. 
and Nancy will come back later and give you some more information on how you can contact us. I would invite you to pray for us as we are praying for you. And we're asking God to meet every need that you have. Feel free to reach out to us and uh, minister to us in any way you can through prayer and support. There is just one body. There are many different uh, denominations and churches, but there's one true God. And we are part of the Assemblies of God and we love them. And we love what it is that they're doing to reach the world. We know that the majority of people that come out of the world and into Christ and the salvation knowledge is done so through the ministries and the unity shared amongst the Assemblies of God people. Now, there are other organizations that shuffle people around, but I'm talking about people that do not know the Lord at all. It's through the po powerful Holy Spirit just like on the day of Pentecost, when G when Jesus promised it to them, they received it, Peter preached it, and then 3,000 got saved, 5,000 that week, and it's just exponentially grown from there, just like our opportunity to be with you. I had six girls in the first youth group that I had in King's Chapel in Springfield, Missouri, and from there it's just escalated uh, forward we keep teaching the same principles from God's Word and God keeps opening up avenues and doors and I want to talk to you today about Revelation revealed I know every generation wants the whole fulfillment of Revelation made known in their moment in their time but I want to caution us that we have to be careful not trying to force God's will plan and purpose it could be that the Lord would come soon or it could be that it could be another thousand years. We don't know when the Lord is going to return. And exponentially, God is doing some really powerful things. Think of uh, uh, churches today where they might have only had 30 or 40 people. Now they'll have three or 4,000 that they're impacting. And uh, even a small group of people now that are led by the Holy Spirit are impacting whole continents. I'm believing God is giving us Uganda and uh, Pakistan and uh, major parts of India. And as we are moving forward, we do that through the authority of the word that Nancy just read to you. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's not plural, it's singular. There's only one revelation because there's only one Jesus. There's only one Messiah. And uh, people are coming to know him in a personal kind of way. And notice that John is testifying to what he saw. And the reason that John is, I believe, chosen is that he's the only disciple that stays faithful even through the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross. All the other ran away and they all had to get tested again. I believe they made heaven except Judas. But I believe the rest of them made heaven. Even Peter was reinstated. You can read that in John chapter 21. But notice, and Nancy so beautifully read it, blessed are the ones who read aloud. And I want to read aloud to you from God's word so that it, it ministers to you and prepares you today for what's going to happen tomorrow. Prophecy has two parts to it. We speak prophetically because the Lord wants us to speak with his authority. But then there's also prophecy where he tells us what is going to happen in the near future. And I believe those things will happen as we study God's word together today. Our hearts are brought near to the Lord when we read and study the word. Join me now, if you would, at verse 4. To the seven churches in the providence of Asia. Now they did a lot of trade from east to west through Asia. And as we see those trade routes going through these major cities, the Holy Spirit knew that if you could establish churches in these strategic places, that there would be a great opportunity for the world to hear about Jesus. That was Paul's mission, was it not? To establish a church in Rome that would reach the entire world and tell the whole world who Jesus is. I believe as we look here at this passage here, uh, continue on with me in the middle part of verse 5, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. 
If you have not had your sins removed through the blood of Jesus, you're still in shackles. You're blinded. I was in shackles and I was blinded. But as I invited Jesus Christ into my life, he then broke the shackles. He lets me see clearly. And now we have a chance to follow and are free. He that the sun sets free is free indeed. Don't let anybody shake you from that powerful truth. Verse 6, and has made us to be a kingdom and a priest to serve his God and Father. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. A key element of understanding that's somewhat being challenged in our world today, and that is that Jesus is going to return. Look with me, if you would, at verse 7. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Remember when he ascended and a cloud hid him from their sight and they kept looking and an angel came to them and said, why do you keep looking? This same Jesus who has gone in like manner is going to come back. Now remember, there's a difference between the rapture of the church and the great day of the Lord. I believe here he's talking about the time, which is the next major event, when Jesus will be in the sky and all of us who know him as Lord and Savior and are serving him, our names are written in the Lamb's book of life, the dead in Christ will rise first and we who are alive will join them and we will meet Jesus in the sky. This will be a clear witness that Jesus is who he said he was. Now, while there are millions of Jewish people that are now turning to Jesus, believing that he is a Messiah, I just hope that you see that many are on that journey. But the whole nation of Israel and many, many others will come to the Lord when that revelation occurs, when the rapture of the church, whatever number that is, 500 million, a billion people, whatever that number is. Jesus cautioned us, though. He said, narrow is the way, and few be it that find it. So you just don't cruise through life, and because I'm an American and I'm a Christian, I'm going to go to heaven. No, it has to be a personal relationship with Jesus. And notice that it says here, every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. Think about that soldier that pounded the nails. Think about the soldier that whipped Jesus, those that teased him and crushed his brow with the, with the thorns. They will give, get a chance, I believe in this life, to have repented of that, and then they will rise to be with the Lord. And let me say to many of you, you haven't sinned so much that you're not going to go to heaven. If you committed the antichrist sin of, of the Holy Spirit and rejecting the Holy Spirit, you wouldn't be listening to this broadcast. You wouldn't be listening to this video or this teaching. You're hearing this because the Holy Spirit is reaching out to you right now all over the world and drawing you into a rightful relationship with him. And notice all the people on the earth will mourn because of him so shall it be. Amen. You know, one will be in a bed and one will be taken. Uh, two will be working, one will be taken. So are you part of the group that knows him and is ready to meet him? Notice the principle that he says there, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the A to the Z, says the Lord God, who is right now. He's the great I am right now. And notice that he talks about who was, past tense, and who is to come, the Almighty. So I'm encouraging you, resist all the ideologies that have twisted our religious orders, and let us fall in love with Scripture and know Jesus. See, the, the person of Jesus and the Bible are synonymous. And when we align ourselves with the Word of God, we are aligning ourselves with Jesus. And Jesus had promised them, now go wait for the Holy Spirit to come. That's why this ministry is called The Bridge. We believe that we are the Book of Acts, the Spirit-filled believers 
that have this opportunity to share the truth with you under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to have all the knowledge. We don't have to have all things sorted out, but we become a bridge from one place, which is earth, to heaven. And I want to lay down my life and provide that, Nancy and I do, and I want you to do that for your family. Let us do that for our communities, our nation, and even our world. So as we look at this, notice he moves straight into the vision. And let's look at that together right now. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that is ours in Jesus was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Why is he on the island of Patmos? Because he'd been preaching the word. The more I proclaim biblical truths and uh, attach biblical truths to the culture, the less Facebook wants me to be on. The more I preach the power of the Holy Spirit, in fact, some have already just turned me off because you don't want to receive from the Holy Spirit and from the Word of God. You don't need to listen to Randy Jones, but you do need to listen to Jesus. He's the only one that's rescued us from death and eternal life. And I'm going to show you those keys here in just a moment. Look at verse 11, which said, Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches. So this is Jesus, and he's saying to John, Write it down and send these letters to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Now, because this is a different kind of writing, it has an important message in it. And when you use the number seven, it means the number that is complete. So while it's written to these seven churches, it's written to all the churches. And in fact, one letter could be sent to Smyrna, and then it could be sent to Philadelphia as well. These are areas that we, the body of Christ, needs to think about and apply and make application into our own lives. And notice what he says in verse 12, I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And we know, we know what a lampstand is, it brings the light. These are the seven lights, which is the entire body of Christ, seven being the complete number. And amongst the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash around his chest. And the hair on his head was white like wool and white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze, glowing in a furnace, and a voice was like the sound of rushing waters. And in his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. And then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. Well, it's kind of a little bit too late because he was already fearful. He says, I am the first, the last. I am the living one. I was dead and now I and now look, I am alive. See, even Jesus knew that his coming back to life, his dead body coming back to life. He ate food. He embraced them. They embraced him. I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. I'm going to stop right there. And I want to just expound on what we've looked at just so far. We'll pick up in verse 19 next time. But notice that the keys of death and Hades. See, death is an eternal separation. One of the things that John was experiencing on the island of Patmos is he could look across the waters and see the fires at night of the city and the people he longed to be with, but he couldn't physically be there. Just as I have loved ones and friends that are in heaven and I long to be with them. And they are the cloud of witnesses that are cheering us on. But as we, as we think about that process, let us realize that Jesus broke the power of death. 
he came back to life. And there's nobody really arguing that point. It is so verifiable historically. It is so verifiable biblically. Uh, so many of us have had a personal experience with Jesus that's transforming. And I just trust that as you allow this life-giving force, that's what it means to be born again. The old Randy died. And I trust that the old you died. That means our will, our way of doing things. And we then submit to Christ and we are resurrected in a spiritual sense, even in this life. Now, one day, my body is going to rise to be with the Lord. If I die and I'm in the grave, those who are at the grave, they're going to rise first. It's a clear witness that Jesus is exactly who he said he was. And notice that he holds the keys of Hades. You don't want to go to Hades. You don't want to go to hell. Because after that will be the great white throne judgment and then be cast into the lake of fire and be forever eternally separated from God. You know what's more painful than physical pain? It's emotional pain. Remember the sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. I just want you to know people can hurt you. Emotions can wound us. And I just want to invite you right now as we tie up this portion. Nancy's going to come and share a testimony. But as we tie up this portion of the time together, Jesus wants to unlock you from bondage. It's a prayer that invites Christ into our lives, but then it's a process of being transformed. You need to continually, Paul said, I die daily to myself. And I'm inviting you now, join with me in prayer and ask Jesus to come into your life. Would you pray this prayer with me and let Christ be number one in your life? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. And then also let yourself come under the teachings of Jesus. Read scripture yourself. I like to expound on it and bring it to you from my experiences and from the entire Word of God. I think you do need to be taught and trained by others so that you have the whole perspective of Scripture from Genesis to Revelation. But I'm inviting you now to pray a prayer that brings you into the family, brings you into the body of Christ. Pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life that I might live with you forever. I give you all of my life from this day forward. I surrender to you. Speak to me through your word. Let your Holy Spirit come dwell inside of me. Change who I am by your peace and power. I receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible is not just a history book. It tells us about things of history. Nancy's going to come and tell you a story, a testimony that's true of God's power to heal and to restore. If you have a prayer request, don't hesitate to go through our website and let us know. We pray every morning together, Nancy and I do, and we want to pray specifically for you and your prayer requests. Come tell us a mighty presence of the Spirit, Nance. Amen. Praise God. That was a good word about revelation. Wow. That really challenges us. But the word, the testimony that I have, I have permission from my cousin, Joan, to share with you. Um, she shared this on the phone with me the other day. Um, you know, we go through life and we don't know why things happen. And sometimes as Christians living in the Spirit, we feel like the Lord gives us a word sometimes. And we're like, how does that apply? What does that mean? But my cousin was married. Um, she's gracefully in her 80s, doing very well, very, living a blessed life. But she was married at a young age and then um, 
had a child after many years of marriage, had a child and wanted another one. And finally the Lord blessed their family with a second child. So mm -hmm. she had two boys that were born. And um, right after that second child was born, um, I'm hoping I'm getting all this testimony in sequence here. The Lord revealed to her a word to her spirit that said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But actually he said, I give and I take away. And she was like, okay, this was right after the birth of her new, newborn baby and her son. And she's like, okay, what does that mean? Well, it wasn't long after that, within a matter of a few months, her husband um, had cancer, got cancer. They, it was just like a real sudden thing. And within a year, he passed. And the Lord kept telling her that he gives and he takes away. And he gave her the son because he knew he was going to be taking her, her husband. And she rested on that word of God for all these years, never remarried. Mm -hmm. She's been faithful. She's been a, a godly person. And she raised her boys in, in the knowledge of the Lord. And um, they're adults now. They're both adults and have their own grown children. But they lived their life for the for God to glorify God my my cousin and her husband and as he passed her husband Wayne passed away God received all the glory in, in that Amen. and you know I would imagine please don't leave me <laughs> but I would imagine it would be very very difficult to lose your spouse and right. um, that would be a difficult thing and we all know God is with us and can get us through. But at the same time, it's really comforting to know that mm -hmm. God had prepared her for that and gave her a word in advance. So God praise does God. know what he's doing. Praise mm -hmm. God for that, you know, that hope and encouragement that he gives us. Mm -hmm. So I just want to also tell you that we would love it if you're watching this and you like what you're seeing and what you're hearing, the word of God, please subscribe. And um, on, on the bottom there, you'll see right down there is where you subscribe. And um, You'll also see our website. We would love for you to, to join our website and you can put your prayer requests there, whatever. We would love to stay in touch with you. So thank right. you for being with us today as we shared the bridge, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to you, bridging to you. God Amen. bless you. It's so good to know that God does know how to give. And lots of times when I'm doing a funeral service, there's lots of babies present. And I always try to make it a, a note of that, that while we do lose moms and dads and uncles, aunts, uh, and sometimes uh, spouses or our own children, which is very, very painful, the most painful that we can uh, think of. But even though that transpires, God does give us the next generation. And we don't know how long that we have until the Lord comes back. It could be uh, this evening. And I want you to be ready in your spirit because you could go into eternity or the Lord could rapture the church at any moment. But I also realize that it, he could postpone his time and we want you to be ready. Hey, thanks for watching uh, the broadcast, the video today and uh, stay in touch with you, with us and uh, be blessed. We'll see you next time. God bless.